Hey fellas, I need to know what you want to know next, because part 3 here pretty much finishes up the base logic of the application gets things go. Welcome to part 3 of creating our Flash Action Script 3 View, Scroll and Click MP3 Playlist Player. Let's take a look at where we are our project here. Where is it? There it is. So in the project we've completed part 1 and part 2 and we're going to move on to part 3 here. So let's copy this folder. Copy and paste. Let's rename it part 3. Part 3, double click inside of it. Let's open that Flash file. We'll save as part three. Okay, we're ready to roll. So in that folder, part three, we have our XML. Well, we can get rid of part two here. Let's get rid of that one. And we don't need that either. Okay, so what we left off with was in part two, this where we had our list populated with the actual songs that are on server but it's just not playing yet and that's what we're going to cover in part 3 here so now in part 3 folder we're in this flash file here that's part 3 and all we have to do is talk about the timeline a little bit what we're going to do is click or highlight frame 2 and press F6 create a new keyframe blank keyframe frame 3 we're going to do the same thing create a new keyframe now on frame 2, let's highlight that and press F9 or go to Window, Actions, and let's type in this code. Now above the code, I put a, a little comment that says, this is where and when the song switching takes place when a list cell is clicked. So within your list component, when any cell is clicked, actually let's extend these out now. Press F5 on the list layer on frame 3. That'll extend it out to live in all three frames. It will be in existence in all three of those frames that way any part of the code that needs to talk to that list it won't have any problem finding it. Now so let's uh, look at this code. This is the song URL variable that we established in frame 1 which the application really will never go to frame 1 again. This is how it works. When the application enters it goes it automatically hits frame 1 and establishes all these things that we discussed in part 1 and 2. Once the XML is loaded, we're giving it a command to go to and stop 3 in this timeline. So it's going to go to and really pass right over 2 and not read it and go to frame 3 and stop. It's going to start playing song 1, the one we established to be first song, remember? So that's what happens. And then it never goes back to frame 1 again. When a new item is clicked to play, it snaps to frame 2 and then goes to frame 3 again. So it's kind of just going to keep snapping between frame 2 and 3 when people click on things or when a song ends or whatever. So on frame 2, we're establishing that song URL to be a switching variable of track to play. So the track to play is established on click of the list items and let's put that code in now and explain that really fast it's just a few lines not much at all so on frame 3 we're gonna highlight that and go into the actions panel there so we're done with frame 2 that's it it's a one-liner it looks into the mp3's files folder and it has which track to play established right there dynamically dot mp3 so that's the new song URL that the player is gonna be set to play when it snaps to frame 3 here and here's the code. Okay, this is the code that pretty much will make the application operate at a base level. So it will have the song, it'll start playing song one di by default, and it will switch the songs to play and play those new songs when any item in the list is clicked. So let's explain the code very quickly. First, we stop 
the application from looping so we stop on frame 3 every time because this is where the sound the song actually plays it only snaps back to frame 2 to switch the song variable that is set to play then it goes to frame 3 again very quickly and plays that song so frame 3 is really where the application lives most of the time where the the timeline marker will be most of the time during when people are listening or using the player online so the first thing we do is stop then we set a variable for the sound object and we set another variable for the channel attached to that sound object and I learned my sound programming techniques from the flash help file in CS3 you know you just type in sound programming and there's a whole bunch of tutorials uh, video jukebox podcast player this podcast player is where I learned most of my stuff for sound programming in ActionScript 3 so what I did was set the sound object I set the channel for the sound object and then I set the context a uh, variable called context which is the sound loader context uh, object for this sound object and what's going to happen is it sets a buffer of five seconds to each song that's loading in so it'll be a five second buffer you can change that to ten thousand if you want a ten second buffer and actually it's not even a very necessary feature but it's good to have a buffer so here on line five we set the sound to load and we add as parameters or arguments to that load is song URL which is going to be a constant changing dynamic variable and uh, the context which is the five second buffer which context like I said is not a necessary feature but it's nice to have now in line six we set the channel to actually play now so the sound is loaded here now we can set the channel to play so we set play pause position now right here is where it actually starts playing so the pause position is made in case we want to add a pause button to the application which most uh, mp3 players have a pause button so that's we'll probably be adding that in I'm not sure but we're gonna set that there just in case and the pause position variable was established on frame one remember right here pause position number type variable set to zero we're gonna be using that uh, but at the base level of this application it really doesn't even need it because there is no pause button yet uh, now on line 8 here is where we setting the playlist item click listener so this list component has an instance name of list so we just say list dot add event listener its event and it's the change event for the list component and the function that's gonna fire off is called item click and here it is 10 through 15 there there's four lines inside of it there's four things that happen when item click function runs let's explain those now okay the first line is we set the channel which controls the sound object to stop then we set in the status text field actually we have to say no label is correct for that yep so in the status text field we're putting now playing a string of now playing the event that target which is the list component selected item you, so you can pretty much just type list right there if you wanted but uh, you say list dot selected item dot label and that's what's going to show inside of the now playing and I might have to change that to song string and then the next line is track to play this one is very important because this is switches this helps the switching that happens on frame two see right here track to play right here it knows what track to play by what cell is clicked inside of the list component so we say event dot target which is equal to the list remember list dot selected item dot song string and where did we get that song string from the XML file that's right remember on frame one right here we add song string into the list item through the add item function remember we had the label there song string is sitting right here and has a value of the song title so the player would will know exactly which song we want to play when we click on that cell in the list 
Finally, the last line is go to and play to. So we switch the variable track to play, snap to frame to. What that does is it switches this URL request variable and then that snaps back to frame 3 very quickly and starts that song to play with the song URL variable reset. It's very simple. Now I've explained every line of this pretty in depth and you should have no problem understanding exactly what's going on.